So what are you gonna use the beets for? Ordering green onion sausage, going with a beets or ketty. We roast them, peel them, shave them, and then we serve them with uh, Szechuan pepper, herbs, their old wilted greens. They're marinated in uh, Galliano herbs and orange juice. So, runners! You know, I sell a big old towering pile of beets for six bucks a pop. People tend to enjoy that sort of thing. Video portraits of American trendsetters. 10 cities across the country, five episodes in each city. This week, picking beets at high noon in Louisiana with Michael Doyle of Morapa Foods. Right now we're in what's called the Bywater, which is the Riverside neighborhood of the Upper Ninth Ward. We look at it now and it's here and we're in this hot neighborhood, but at the time this was an abandoned building. There's a lot of food to be had around here. You can eat coffee shops, bars, you can get things here, you can get things there, and a lot of it's good. But there aren't really any restaurants. There's a few, but there's really not restaurants. Restaurants in the sense of open at a set time, close at a set time. It's kind of an underserved area for whatever reason. Whoa. Why does the pesto look so different? I mean, you can't deny, dude, that doesn't look anywhere near the same. It looks perfect. Perfect, huh? Before the retire, then. What frustrates you most about the restaurants in New Orleans? It's a tough business. I mean, you're often fighting a losing battle to make people happy, no matter how hard you work or how talented you are. You know, certainly people who, uh, who serve tables or work at bars, they're sort of got this front row seat to people at like sort of their worst, most entitled behavior. And it leads to cynicism, like here's some stupid food for the stupid people. People end up making food that they think people want. Ordering fish and chips two times, going with greens, kohlrabi, chicken leg. What happened to that extra fish and chips? The fish and chips he was up? Well, did you sold it in one minute? I told you not to sell it. All right, I need two fish and chips on the fly now, please. Cap those, please. I get my stuff from anywhere from 20 to 60 sources, depending on the season. It's a lot for us to sort of keep up with, and it's certainly a pain in the ass, but it's, I think it's worth it. We have a farmer, Tony, who I've been working with for years and years. We've known each other about five years now. Swedish fingerlings came up later. It looked like they're taking longer. Some of these big ones is making a good bit. Cool. And you can just pick the whole plant until there's nothing left on the stock? Pretty much. Okay. It's a purple kohlrabi. So, kohlrabi is means cabbage turnip in German. They got kind of a funky flavor. They'll take other stuff on though. It's just cool, like, look at these things. And nobody else sells kohlrabi. Ordering carrot soup three times, followed by sweet potatoes, taco two times, going with a kimchi. Yeah. You know, I think we've rightfully gained a reputation for sort of being one of the most highly seasonal restaurants in town. I mean, we'll, we'll literally pull the plug on something one day and have something else ready to go because that's the way the crops are going. Mike, is this a different species of kohlrabi or is just purple, purple kohlrabi? Or purple, purple kohlrabi. We do need to get those uh, shaved and salted. Dad's Danny's. He wants to do adobo. Part of having people who are very serious about food and cooking, that's what we talk about. And that's the major interest in our lives is we talk about food and cooking and things we've cooked and things we've eaten and things that we really like but we never see anywhere. You know, if we're talking about making fish with butter sauce and crab meat on top, there's 750 guys in this town who can do that as well or better than I can. But if you're talking about putting a bunch of pickles all over the Brussels sprouts, like I'm pretty much your guy. It's your night to shine. Yeah. 
know, people said, oh, well, they, you know, nobody down there wants to go out to eat. Like, well, maybe they do. Maybe they want to. And maybe if we made the first step in that direction and said, here's something we're really excited about, we hope you're excited too, maybe people would respond. So there's a million better ways to make money than this. It's really stressful on your body. It will destroy your home life if you're not careful. Yeah, this is a really dumb, dumb business to be into if you're not really, really care about it. So it has to be emotional and it has to be passionate. I love my job. Next time on American Hipster Presents, we learn about neckties and sartorial style with Micaiah Bethune of Wildlife Reserve. Hey, had a few drinks, a couple chameleons. What you know about a chameleon? Yeah, that's a drink with salt on the rim. Just ate some food, it was good. More pies, badass, pick some vegetables. Got a dirty shirt, change my shirt, change my pants. Let us know what you think of the episode. Click on the links over here for more, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>